one eternity later. That's right, everybody. I'm back. Whoa. I'm your host, Julian Halil, and you're watching Environment, serving you a fresh breath of content on the weekly. That's right. I said weekly. As it may be pretty easy to tell, things didn't really go in my favor in terms of having any time to do, well, anything in the new job that I mentioned many moons ago in my last episode. In all honesty, I was just like many of you trying to survive in these troubled times. I was working about 60 hours a week as well as keeping up with my athletic career, so time was limited. But a lot of interesting and exciting things have happened in my life, including a new, new job and the fact that I'm appearing on TV Ooh, tomorrow what? night, December 5th, 11 p.m. Eastern on NBC Sports. So, you know, go ahead and check that out if you feel like watching me juking and zooming on World Chase Tag on live TV. You know, might be kind of cool. But anyways, you didn't come here to hear about all that garbage. You came here to be entertained with environmental news, tips, tricks, activities, and terrible puns. So, let's grow right into it. As always, I love to start off with some good news, and some good news there is. Presidential-elect Joe Biden has already begun working behind the scenes to get America back on track to limiting the global temperature from rising more than two degrees Celsius higher than the previous 40-year temperature averages, as planned in the Paris Climate Agreement. In part of his work, he has set the groundwork to instate John Kerry as the first ever dedicated climate change official in the National Security Council. You better not be just kidding about JK. In the Paris Climate Agreement, John Kerry helped to steer the negotiation and lock in of nearly 200 countries, including the USA. In this new position, John Kerry will have the challenge of convincing many skeptical global leaders that America is not trash and we will actually continue our climate leadership and stay the course toward climate sustainability. Good luck, John Kerry. You're gonna need it. This promise of a more sustainable future and the more conducive environment for environmentalism has begun to spark up activism. A senior career scientist in the EPA has spoken out against a rushed rollback and a new policy to obstruct air and water pollution control acts. The scientist Dr. Sink stated that if this rule were to be finalized, it would compromise American public health and cause chaos. Oh, so you won't listen to me when I say it, but when the big senior scientist says it, oh, now it's finally legitimate concern. You know what? Actually, that, uh, yeah, that kind of makes sense. I'll cut you some slack on this one, but I'm watching. Huh. Anyways, thank you, Dr. Sinks. You and the other scientists at EPA could really be the key to changing things. Another activist to talk about is General Motors itself. They've dropped any climate rollbacks and have promised to do their part to reduce greenhouse gas emissions. On this matter, hopefully their bite is as strong as the growl of their engines or the, uh, of their motors or whatever sound an electric car makes. What I'm trying to say is GM plans to move towards electric cars and so far, many other automotive companies are following suit. All in all, some pretty exciting news. I'm excited for us to all be driving around in solar-powered self-driving cars one of these days. Meanwhile, on the other hand, maybe some not so good news. A new federal report has shown that many owners of diesel vehicles have done some illegal tampering and installed some devices in their car that disables the vehicle's emission regulation. Hey. This illegal tampering has led to an extra emission load of about 9 million whole trucks on the road. That's not so good. Unfortunately, these numbers are just what have been recorded, so the actual numbers could be way worse. This really shows how much of an impact we can have on the environment as an individual and part of the reason why I started this channel. On a much better note, 62 oil and gas companies from around the world have signed on to the new oil and gas methane partnership led by the United Nations Environment Program. The program's goal is to reduce the oil and gas industry's methane emissions by 45% by 2025 and by 60 to 75% by 2030. Simply by switching over to the newest efficiency technologies and closely monitoring their emissions. Methane gas is one of the worst greenhouse gases contributing to climate change. There may not be as much of it as CO2, but methane is roughly 80 times more potent than carbon dioxide. Now, there are natural methane emissions from sources such as wetland microbes, melting of permafrost, and volcanoes, but the majority of methane release does come from human activities, with its number one contributor, the production, distribution, and combustion of fossil fuels. 
Of course, I must also give an honorable mention to my pops. He sure does try. Methane gas is not only a climate change concern, but also a public health concern, as methane can lead to unhealthy levels of ozone in the troposphere, which for those of you who don't know is the lowest level of the atmosphere where all life exists and like, you know, we breathe. The point is, this is bad. So these 62 companies have come together to help the earth and us Hooray. stay a little bit healthier. So thank you for that. Now, I like to add environmental solutions to the show. Solutions that we can all take part in to reduce our footprint and help out a little bit. That's right, we do have the power of choice and knowledge. Methane and all greenhouse gases can be reduced by individuals in many ways. For example, switching to more energy efficient light bulbs and technology, carpooling, using cruise control, keeping your wheels inflated, getting your vehicle emission tested, upgrading to a hybrid or electric vehicle, wasting less of anything, using compost instead of fertilizer, not eating red meats, going solar, and learning to recycle properly. There are many more tips and options for sustainable living, but I've already covered a lot in this episode. So if you guys are interested, let me know in the comments and I may make a whole episode more focused on all that. Just so you know, you don't have to do any of these things. I'm not your parent. I can't tell you what to do. I can't tell you how to live your life. I can't tell you that Billy from across the street is a bad influence and no nine-year-old should have that many face tattoos. I'm simply here trying to empower you and let you know that there are things you can do in your everyday life to help out and make the world a little bit better place. Whoa. So unfortunately, that's about all the time I've got left for today, but I hope you enjoyed this episode and I thank you for watching. You. If you liked this video and you wanna help support the environment or education, Plant a like, hit subscribe, tap that bell to let you know each week when the next video comes out, and hey, maybe even leave a comment. Have a wonderful day, my friends. I'll see you next week, and as always, stay fresh.